I've always admired the dreamers who are also the doers of the world. It's easy to come up with ideas, but it's very hard to put them into action. But having grown up at Virgin with dad at the helm, I've been lucky to be surrounded by people who actually make things happen. The last decade has been some of the most exciting and innovative years in Virgin's history. So I'm going to do a new series of interviews to introduce you to some of the amazing people who work on our most innovative projects. Today, today I am over the moon to be joined by Kelly Latimer, the chief test pilot at Virgin Orbit and soon to be one of the first commercial spaceship pilots at Virgin Galactic. In her career, Kelly went from being a jet instructor on a supersonic trainer aircraft to becoming the first women research test pilot hired by NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center. She's also served in both Afghanistan and Iraq and worked as a test pilot for Boeing. In 2014, Kelly joined Virgin Galactic as a test pilot and has been part of the Virgin Orbit story from the outset of Launcher One's development. She's recently made history by co-piloting the launch plane for Launch Demo 2, which was when we successfully saw Virgin's orbit rocket reach space for the first time. I was watching it live and it was truly amazing and a moment in history. Throughout all of this amazing career, Kelly has never given up on her dream of becoming an astronaut and will eventually be flying Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 to space to earn her commercial astronaut wings. So um, to kick off, um, I've got lots of questions for you and I just love to just talk about your dream of becoming an astronaut. Um, you've dre dreamt of being an astronaut since you were really young. What fueled that incredible passion of yours? Yeah, it's funny because I don't remember there being like one thing. I mean, I grew up, of course, during the Apollo missions, you know, so I saw rocket launches. I saw astronauts, you know, I saw men on the moon. And so it was obviously all of that, but I just, I don't ever remember a time where I didn't want to be an astronaut. Like I, I remember being like before even nursery school, watching this little show, Romper Room, where they have like kids and like an, you know, a teacher and stuff. And they were dressed up for Halloween. This little boy was dressed up as an astronaut. And I remember already thinking, well, he can't wear that because that's what I'm going to be. Like, I just, I don't even know when it started, but it's just, it's been forever that that's, you know, that's just what I wanted to do. I'm going to go to space someday. <laughs> Oh, and it's just so cool. But lots of people have that dream. I don't I don't think you're you're on your own to have that dream, but you're you've actually made it happen. Um, have you had bumps along the road of of or did you know exactly what career you, path you needed to take to get there? And and how did you make it happen? Yeah, it's kind of a step by step thing. So I, what's funny is, I mean, I always want to be an astronaut, but I never really told people that, you know, when they said, what do you want to be? I always said like, oh, a fireman or a nurse or a teacher or engineer. I never really said astronaut just because I wanted it so much and I was going to do it that I, I just, I didn't want to hear the negativity or I didn't want to hear the, oh, that's really cute. But what do you really want to do? You know, so I really didn't tell people, but literally I rode my bike to the library before, just before starting high school. And I'm like, well, I got to figure out how to make this happen. And I just went to the encyclopedia and I looked up astronauts and who they were. And I'm like, oh, they're all military test pilots. I wonder what that means. So I looked at military test pilot. Like, oh, well, you have to be a commissioned officer. I'm like, I wonder what that means. And literally, I just sort of from a few days in the library, just figured out, oh, I need to go to either an academy or get an engineering degree and go ROTC. Then I need to go in the Air Force. I need to be a pilot. And then I need to become a test pilot. And that was pretty much all I knew. And then each step along the way, you know, that I would sort of tell people what I wanted to do. They go, oh, well, you know. You should you should go, you know, to pilot training first. You should get your graduate degree. And then you know, I sort of had people help. But yeah, like every little piece along the way was sort of putting the map together. <laughs> so how brilliant at 14 years old, you sort of <laughs> you had seen that goal in sight. Um, did it did it make it easier to get there because you had that goal? It did, because I kind of just broke it down in steps, you know, because because in the end, each each step was really hard, right? Like like getting into the academy was hard. So because I knew I wanted to do that. I thought that was the best way. When I was a freshman, you know, I had my little typewriter out. I would wrote my letter, dear sirs, my name is Kelly Latimer. I'm attending, you know, Governor Lewiston High School. I would like to attend the academy. Please send me information. So they sent me this whole package as a freshman. And I didn't tell my parents. I thought they would think I was nuts wanting to go to a military academy. So I ran out to the mailbox. I got it. And I literally kept that application under my mattress for like, and I was like, what are they looking at? What do they need? And so I just like each little step was like that. You know, I was like, what do I need to get in? Then once I got the academy, OK, I should get a degree in engineering. So which one? What's the best? And just, you know, yeah, each step <laughs> kept going. You really are an inspiration. It's, it's just 
Brilliant. It just sort of gives me goosebumps talking to you. Did you did you encounter any setbacks along the way? Um, so the first one would be, you know, so I, I, so I went to the academy and then I actually got the opportunity to get a graduate degree right away. So that was a huge opportunity. So I took advantage of that. And then I went to pilot training and then out of pilot training. So all the astronauts I had read about, of course, were fighter pilots. You know, they all had fighter jet backgrounds. And at the time, women weren't allowed to fly combat aircraft. So it wasn't an option for me. So I'm like, hmm, I wonder how competitive I'll be not being able to fly fighters. And so, you know, the advice was, well, stay and fly T-38, which is that supersonic trainer and get your high performance time and then go to big airplanes and you can still be a test pilot, you know, and go do the route from there. So that was probably the first little bit where I couldn't quite, you know, didn't have all the opportunities to be as competitive as everybody else. Um, but I was still yeah, able to get to test pilot school. A big hurdle that like you couldn't change the system there. That was <laughs> just a, a barrier and you, and you still managed to do it. Um, yeah. And then you read overcome it and in and a few weeks ago you made history by co-piloting the Virgin Orbit flight um, which I just think is just so cool so that was the first ever not I want I'm going to read this because it's it's so historic it was the it was um, no other orbital class air launch liquid fueled rocket had successfully reached space before the moment where you flew the launch of plane uh, for Virgin Orbit. Um, can you tell me a bit about that mission and, and how it felt to be on board? Um, yeah, it was, I, the, I mean, having all that success on that mission, we're still, I mean, it was a couple of weeks ago and I still felt like it was just yesterday. I mean, it's just, it's so phenomenal that, you know, because I've been with it since we just, you know, we got the airplane and you know, we just started with an airplane. We started modifying it. They were building the rocket. We were doing engine tests. I mean, and just putting the whole thing together to there's this huge choreographed operation that happens on getting the rocket on the airplane and doing the fueling. And we had practices and found issues, you know, and changed our procedure. And we tested the rocket, found some issues and then changed it. So there's this, you know, like, like you're planning on a date, but it's things happen. It's development and they slip. But we have a problem we solve it, we move on. And so this one from the beginning, because it was our second launch and it really felt like it because we had really worked out all of our procedures. We had worked out, you know, all the issues with the rocket. So it really felt incredibly smooth just from the beginning. And then we get all the way up to drop in the rocket, you know, the airplane kind of rolls off and we're still flying and we're just watching it go and we're watching it go. And then we can't see it anymore. So we're actually flying back and the guys in the control room are calling us. It's still going. We just had separation. We had stage two light. We're like, what? You know, and then we're on the ground and it's still going. You <laughs> know, It's still happening. So it felt great. But the, I mean, the, the team is fantastic, right? I just, there's just no better people to go through this journey with and have the success with. It's just a fantastic team all around. And, all the hard work and you know all the all the setbacks and, and all those all the doubts and everything are just gone in a day it's just mm. fantastic because <laughs> that's the thing you forget is that for us watching live i mean it was it was incredible and every bit you're nail biting all the you know it's just so exciting but everything i'm you know i'm not i'm a bit sort of one armed removed so i don't see the day to day of all the hard work that's gone in from behind the scenes and all the different people that have have made it happen um, and so it really is just such a accumulation of so much hard work. Oh that yeah, made that success happen the other day. Uh, just, just incredible. It's so cool. Yeah, um, there's just there's no there's no feeling like success after. <laughs> after <laughs> hard work. I know. Um, ha having been a test pilot, you must have put yourself in some really precarious situations. Um, do you think? you need a lot of mental strength to do that? Or do you feel that because you've done a lot of training, you're ready for those situations? I mean, sort of things like when you're learning to fly and you you stall a plane at 30,000 feet. I mean, I just couldn't even <laughs> comprehend doing that. Um, what, like, how, how does it go through your thought process when you're having to do these things? Yeah, I guess you start, you know, like you kind of learn. So going through test pilot school, what they teach you is how to fly a lot of different aircraft, take aircraft and put them in positions where they shouldn't be, or, you know, a kind of that edge of, like what the airplane is designed to recover from, you know, you learn how to put it in that position, but it's always about like getting into it slowly. Like you don't just run up and stall the airplane or fall. Like you go very slowly, like, okay, there's a couple more knots. They just go slowly. You're like, okay, now I can feel the buffet and that's normal. And then as a test pilot, when you come through, you'll normally get assigned with senior test pilots that help you. It's like when I came through Boeing, that was the first time I really took a big airplane and no kidding, like stalled it to the, like, it's not flying anymore. And I did it with an experienced test pilot. And then, that qualified me to then go with other pilots. So when I came to Virgin, I kind of had that experience of having gone through a lot of different aircraft tests, taking them to the very edge, 
So to run this program, I felt comfortable doing it because I had done that slow buildup, both flying and in a career. Mm, so you've got that. You've got the amazing t- teachers who are training you. Oh yeah. Yeah. It reminds yeah. me of when I was a medical when I was a medical student. Actually, the sort of saying was, you need to you you watch one, do one, teach one. So yeah. <laughs> yes. you yep. you one uh, in in your in what you're doing, but. But um, yeah, once you get to the level where you're able to teach, you obviously uh, are so qualified that, um, that that hopefully you feel safe. <laughs> yep, yep, definitely. And then we, we go to the simulator too and practice, you know, so we'll kind of practice and we'll practice things going wrong. Like we'll practice, all right, we're doing this stall and then suddenly we lose an engine. So we'll actually kind of make it hard on ourselves. So when you do the actual test, it's not nearly as bad as we make it <laughs> when we train. Oh, yes, that's so true. Well, that's, but that sort of is such innovation, isn't it? That now you can do all these things in a simulator before you have to do it in real life. And you must have seen decades of innovation over the years. In oh, the my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yes, I remember. It's just a funny story. So big airplanes, you can refuel them. So you pull them up behind another big airplane. The first simulator for that, it, no kidding, was this little, like, this little cutout figure of a tanker and this little camera would go behind it. And of course now it's a full simulator, you know, like with, with all the, the vision and it's all simulated computer generated. But back then it was like this little metal figure and this camera flying behind it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how times are changing. It's so, <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's amazing how quickly it's all changing. It is. Um, what do you think makes you most excited about the progress that we are seeing at Virgin Orbit and Virgin Galactic? Like, do you do you sort of pinch yourself on a daily basis of what's happening? I know, I mean, I do, and I'm sort of um, watching it from afar. It is, it is. I mean, the progress is crazy. And what's funny is it feels sometimes, you know, you have like months of, um, you know, delays and, and things happen in the program. And then, but each event we have, is this massive step forward, which is just so this is all this, all this work and everything. And then it's like, boom, this next huge step. You're like, wow, we did it. Okay. That was the next step. And you get back to work again. Um, but what I really love is I feel like these companies are making space accessible to the little guy, right? Like there still are, there are big customers, but in what we're doing, um, we're actually able to get the little guy, like your little CubeSats. You know, we had universities, had those last satellites, right? They just put them together, mm-hmm. NASA packaged them, and we put them up to space. And then Virgin Galactic, you know, you can go buy a ticket and go, you know, ride a rocket into space and have that amazing experience. You know, and you don't need training. You don't need decades of, you know, a career. You don't need, you know, 30 years of pursuing something. You just want to do it and you can do it. That, that's what I really, that's what is so exciting to me about what we're doing. And what are you most excited about when going to space? I can't wait to take my first, like I'm excited to go for myself, but what I really can't wait is to give somebody else that experience. You know what I mean? Like it's like for me, it'll be this, this whole, it'll be a big thing, but to be able to then give somebody that experience, that's going to be amazing. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be so incredible. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited about it as well. I just think to be able to look back at earth and see that, the curvature of the uh, space and just see that there aren't those political borders that we have at the moment um and and we are just one big world one big humanity that um should all be working together i just can't wait to see that from space and i hope that lots of people get that feeling um that we are one planet um and need to be working together um One of my one of my big things that I just think is just so amazing is that when you that what you were saying at the beginning about joining Air Force, the Air Force at a time when women weren't allowed to fly combat aircraft, and then you have become the first female test pilot at Virgin Orbit. So you've you've literally broken that glass <laughs> seventy thousand feet. Um, what do you what would you say to young girls who are thinking about pursuing a career in aerospace or aviation? Yeah, I mean it's sort of like this. The sky's not even the limit anymore. I mean, so many things are opened up and there's there's so many women now in the industry and every part of the industry too. So when I came along also, it was still about that time. I mean, I wasn't really like the first, like there was kind of that first wave of women that, you know, flew military aircraft and stuff before. I mean, I was kind of the second one, but it still was like, you'd walk into a room and it's all guys, you're the only girl. I'm like, oh God, here we go again, you know, but you get over it. But now it's not really like that because there are women flying fighters, bombers. There are women that are running squadrons, you know, and in the industry, women running the companies, the chief engineers, um, you know, running flight operations. So women are everywhere. So it's just, you don't have really the stigma before of like, oh, you're a girl and you do this. Now it's a normal thing. Like, of course, if you want to do it, well, you should just go do it. So yeah, for young girls, just pick what you want to do and go do it. (laughs) 
Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the way anymore. I mean, that's just yeah. great. Yeah, your dream. And actually, as you say, following your dream makes your like life a bit easier because you know exactly what you need to do and when you need to hit those tasks. Um, I know I felt the same way when I had the uh, dream of becoming a doctor uh, from a very young age. I knew which exams I needed to do, which subjects, which grades I needed to get. And it, yeah. and it did just make that, um, that path so much easier. Um, and it was so lovely working towards your mission. Oh, yeah. And, and, getting there um what why why do you think it's um important for the world to continue innovating and pushing these boundaries especially when it comes to space exploration oh i think i mean i think the biggest thing is the view we get back on the earth you know and so everybody talks about how just that how bright and brilliant the earth is you know compared to the the darkness of space in the background and just how precious you know the earth is and i think all of these whether it's satellites you know viewing the earth or looking outward i mean there's a there's a whole universe out there to explore which always that really excites me too um but yeah i just think it's the view we get of our world and ourselves and just how precious it is and how precious we are mm. yeah it is incredible like just having all these remarkable brains working on so many different things um to really just push us forward i do think it's I can't quite comprehend what goes behind um, like space exploration and all the hard work that goes into it. Um, but it's just amazing that there's all these people there making it happen. Yeah, and then the ability to, to communicate amongst ourselves. You know, a lot of these small sats and cube sats are gonna increase our ability to communicate and to communicate from any part of the world, you know, places that don't currently have good communication through some of these systems, you know, will, which is you know, gonna be groundbreaking. Mm. Yeah. I know and getting sort of as you say getting um as, as when people can start communicating everybody in the world will have a way of getting mobile technology we feel so lucky where we live where we have internet and mm -hmm. in this situation now we're all when we're all at home um to be able to have the internet to communicate with people like this but there's many many people in the world that that don't have that but the space exploration to me the exciting thing is that we'll be able to put satellites up and and make sure that um everybody in the world gets access to internet and therefore access to education. Yep. Yeah. Um, what are you most excited for next? Um, so next will probably be whenever I get my chance. Well, next will be for the company when we first take passengers um, to space. That is going to be, I mean, that that is like the next big groundbreaking day. And then for me personally, of course, will be my chance to fly a spaceship, you know, and get my experience and then to take somebody. So that's yeah, and it's all right around the corner too, which is <laughs> so exciting. But yeah, that that's for me what I'm really looking looking forward to. I know, I can't believe it. I know we've said it's around the corner for a very long time, but it really, really is now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, thank you so much for talking to me. I, I I think you're amazing and well done for following your dream and making it happen. And and I can't wait to get the interview out there so that many other people can can see that it's possible. Whatever you, you know, make sure you have a dream and, and aim for it and then you're absolutely going to get there. Yep. Yep. That'd be my right. <laughs> I'll see you, see you in the uh, New Mexico sometime. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you.